Welcome to the Nature Journal Connection. I'm your host, John Muir Laws. Today, we're going to look at how to pace yourself. That is, how to help yourself be able to estimate and measure distances that you see all around you. If you look way down the beach here, about 50 meters away, there is a tree that has fallen down. One of those trees has fallen down and is across the beach there. That's 50 meters away. How do I know it's 50 meters away? Because I've got a measuring tape. And I put it down on the ground, and, and I put it down there, and I measured 50 meters out. And what I'm going to do is I am going to walk this 50 meters several times. Each time, I'm going to record how many steps it takes me to get from here to there. And after I get several of those measurements, I'm going to average them together. So I'm going to get the normal number of steps that it takes me to walk 50 meters. I'm going to write this down. And you're going to see that once I have this number, I'm going to be able to convert it several ways that I'll be able to measure all sorts of things that I see around me. So I want you folks to do this too. You are going to set up, find a flat place with rather, fairly sturdy ground, and you're going to set up your own pace course and measure out 50 meters. I really recommend that people use meters instead of feet. You can do something for 100 feet. It's going to be better if you use meters. A lot of your measurements later on are going to get much, much easier. We just got to get used to using metric. All right. Um, but if you need to use feet, I can't talk you out of it. All right. So we're going to measure the number of paces and record that number. Remember, several times you're going to be taking your normal walking steps. So not exaggerated steps, not toe to toe just your normal walking pace. So what I usually do is I kind of get back and I start walking with my normal pace before I hit that line. And so once I'm kind of on that line doing my walking, I'm gonna be just into my kind of regular flow of paces. I want you folks to do the same thing. You ready? Here I go. So I'm averaging about 61 steps, 61 steps to go 50 meters. Now what I'm going to do is a few mathematical conversions. And this 61 steps per 51 meters, 50 meters, is going to turn into something really, really cool. Let's check out what we do. Here we go. I walked for 50 meters. And the number of steps that it took me to typically do that was 61. So I'm going to make a little division problem here. 50 meters divided by 61 steps. And check this out. What I get is point, it's about 0 0.82 meters per step. Meters per step. This is a number I'm going to write down in my nature journal. And I'm also going to convert this a different way. If I take my number of steps, so 61 steps, and I divide that by my 50 meters, I get a second really useful number. What I get is 1.2, this is for me, steps per meter. So I've got my meters per step and steps per meter. How do I use this? Well, if I'm going um, 8.82 meters per step, and 
I walk for 61 steps, that's going to take me exactly 50 meters. So what I do is I just take the number of steps, take your number of steps and multiply it by your meters per step, and you'll know the distance that you walked. So if I want to know how far did I walk, what I do is I will pace out a distance, and let's say I get 20 steps. I'll then multiply 20 by 0.82, and I'll get the number of meters that I've walked. And what about this number here? How do I use it? Let's say I want to walk 10 meters. What I do is I'll multiply 10 by 1.2, and I'll get the number of steps that I need to walk in order to go that distance. So these two critical numbers, my meters per step and my steps per meter, these are game changers. You want to write these numbers down, and every once in a while, as you grow, these numbers, these, these, these paces are going to change for you. So especially if you've had a growth spurt, then go and redo these numbers, and then rewrite them in the back of your nature journal. And remember that it's going to be a little bit different if you're in sand, a little bit different if you're going uphill or downhill, but on average, kind of hard ground, this is going to be a number that will kind of allow you to measure all sorts of things with a new level of precision. One more time, my meters per step, if I walk a distance and it takes me 10 steps, I'll multiply 10 by this number, I'll know how many meters I've walked. My steps per meter if I want to walk 20 meters, I will multiply 20 by this number, 1.2, all right? And then I know how many steps to go. Let's take a look at a few places I can put these ideas to work. By looking at the color of the sand here, you can tell that the water's just gone out. But if I wanted to measure that, and I didn't have a big measuring tape, how could I measure the distance here from the high, ch high water line down to the shore? Well, if I know my pace, it's going to be easy. All I have to do is walk this a couple of times, and I'm going to figure out how many steps. Now, notice it's at a slope, so my number coming down may be different than my number going up. So what I'm going to do is measure it both ways, count my pace both directions, and then I'll just average those two together. If they're different, I'll be able to figure out what the average number is. Let's take a look at how this looks. I start down here at the water edge, and I'm going to go one, step two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, up to the high water line. And coming down, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And so it's about... It's about equivalent. So eight and eight, eight steps. My pace, again, in meters per step is 0.82. So if I multiply eight steps by 0.82, I know that this section of exposed beach is 6.56 meters wide. Yeah, I, I did the, uh, the math in advance. Uh, I can't do math like that in my head. Um, so um, but the powerful thing here is that because I know my pace, I'm able to convert my steps into a distance. And that's really cool. So that's how you use meters per step. Let's take a look now at how we use steps per meter. I found a little jellyfish stranded on the beach right here. And it gets me thinking, with this last tide event, how many jellyfish have been stranded on this beach? So if I can measure a section of beach and count how many jellyfish I find stranded in that, that can give me a number to describe. Because if I just say I found X number of jellyfish on the beach, but I don't have any descriptor in there of how long that beach was, I'm not going to be able to really give anybody a clear idea of the number of stranded jellyfish that I was seeing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure 100 meters along this beach, and I'm going to count how many stranded jellyfish there are in 100 meters along the beach. So if I want to know how long to go for 100 meters, that's where my steps per meter comes in. So for me, my steps per meter pace is 1.2. 
So if I want to go 100 meters, what I'm going to do is multiply 100 times 1.2, and that's 120. If I take 120 steps, I'm going to go 100 meters. I'm going to find how many jellyfish I find stranded in those 100 meters. Let's give it a try. There we go. 100 meters of beach. I had six stranded jellyfish. And that's a, just an example of how knowing my pace can help, help me if I'm wanting to figure out my meters per step or my steps per meter. Those are all things that I can do once I figure that out. Let me show you one other really interesting trick that you can do with this. Let's say I wanted to measure the length of that fallen tree over there. That would be pretty easy. All I'd have to do is start over there and pace myself until I got to the tip of the tree. Pretty straightforward. But what if you wanted to measure the height of a living tree? What if I wanted to measure one of those trees up there? How tall is one of those trees? I well, if I chop it down and measure it, there's all sorts of bad karma. So check out this technique. This is pretty slick. What you can do if you want to measure the height of a living tree is stand a good distance away from it and hold out a pencil so that the tip of your pencil is just at the top of the tree and your hand is just at the bottom of the tree. Then rotate that pencil down and where you see that tip of the pencil intersect a flat ground surface, that's the height of the tree. So all you do is take a pencil project that down, and bam, you've got the height of the tree. Then you just walk, do, 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 count your paces, multiply by your pace, and you've got the height of that tree. So your challenge for this week is to figure out your own pace. And what I'd like you to do is to start looking around and measuring things. So start to, you know, if you're looking at trees, if you're looking at a river, whatever it is, start measuring big things. So not just with a little ruler, we're going to start to measure big things. And what's going to happen is you're going to begin to, at the start, you know, if you, somebody said like, you know, if, you know this, is, this is 10 meters wide, you don't have any intuitive sense of what that looks like. But after doing this for a little while, you'll have a sense of what an 80 meter tree looks like. You'll have a sense of what 100 meters feels like walking out in the distance. You're going to say if something is 20 meters tall, that will actually mean something to you. And the way you get there is by deliberately, intentionally measuring things around you and paying attention to what you do. So let's play with this. And you're going to find that you start seeing sizes of things in a different way. You also are going to find that your ability to, to estimate lengths and distances is very, very quickly going to improve. It might be even fun to kind of test yourself before, test yourself in about a week, and you're gonna see a big change. And until next time, this is your Nature Journal Connection. Doo -doo -doo.